Hi, I'm Don DeVry Sokol, author, book designer, and avid art journaler. When I first started art journaling, I had a lot of difficulty just really getting started and facing a blank page. I took a lot of workshops with a lot of great teachers, learned a lot of great techniques, but I still was sputtering. And I would see these other students working in their journals and just throwing pages out there like left and right, and it just seemed so simple. But for me, it wasn't. I'd get home, face the blank page, and once again, I would just go blank myself. So what I started realizing was that there are no rules to art journaling. There are basically just, it's just you. It's, it's you and your journal and whatever you want it to be. There are no, no right ways, no wrong ways, and you just really need to approach it in that manner. You need to kind of free your mind up. I have a lot of people ask me, well, how do I get going? How do I get started? And I think really the best way is to kind of approach your pages in a stages way. And what this is, is I've, I've learned, I've kind of taught myself that I have three basic stages I like to work in. And one of them is painting, the next is collage, and there's also doodling writing, which is my favorite. So really what we need to do is first start on our first stage. And what I also need to tell you too is that just kind of use these stages when you first start and just really kind of play with them, have fun. And once you get started in your journal, you can kind of mix them up, rearrange them, and put them in whatever order works for you, and you're going to have a lot more fun. So what we're first going to do is we're going to paint. And um, I like to open my journal to a blank spread, and basically a spread is two facing pages. I use Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper, and that is because it's really heavy. It is a little more expensive than a lot of watercolor papers, but you'll find that if you buy it in bulk, it's generally a lot more inexpensive. And if you really feel like um, that's too much, you can always use another watercolor paper. But I really like to recommend watercolor because you don't have to worry about gesso. You just kind of put your paints down and have fun with it. So let's just roll up our sleeves and get going. Um, first, I'm going to use um, some different paints on my pages. I like to use these inexpensive acrylic uh, craft paints that you can find really anywhere. And I like them because they're inexpensive and they go a long ways and they mix together really well. And you don't have to worry about you know, buying the same brand all the time. You just pretty much um, buy whatever colors you like and you don't have to mix colors either, which is great. I love not having to mix colors. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to start with a few little drops on my spread. And I would say probably like dime size to quarter size, anywhere in between there. Just kind of, you're going to have to kind of play with this um, technique for a little while before you really kind of get the feel of it. And that's okay. You're going to be painting with your fingers. And the reason I like to paint with my fingers is because I have a lot of control over where the paints land and how they mix together. And um, I try to use colors that are kind of along the same um, tones and that aren't separated on the color wheel because then that way you're not going to be making mud. So what I do is I just kind of wipe my fingers and see how that's spreading in. It's a really nice kind of um, combination. I love these two colors together. These are really some of my favorites. And I, I, you'll see that on a lot of my pages, this, this color in the background, this mixture. And so you're really going to wipe all over your, your spread, get to your, your edges, get in the gutter, which is your in between the two pages, and you're just going to keep on spreading it. And see how they just kind of mix together really nicely. And I like to really kind of get them mixed into the paper. This paper just takes mediums, any medium, so well. And that's another reason I really love to use it. And I'm just going to kind of pull some of that excess from the other page and just kind of get that all over the spread. And so, and I like to really kind of get that excess off there too. I don't like to waste. 
And so you'll see that um, I probably need a little bit more on this page. So I'm going to use a little bit more of the blue. Just a couple little drops. And then we're going to spread that in a little bit more. Now, depending on where you live, um, drying times can really vary. I live in Arizona, so <laughs> I really have no problems with drying whatsoever. It goes really quickly. Um, sometimes I get kind of impatient and I use a heat gun. But um, also, too, you want to kind of play with this and get the feel for how long your drying times are. And then you will also, that will help you with your mixing of your colors. Because once they start to dry, they get a little bit more difficult to mix in together. And so you kind of have to keep that in mind. Now I've got um, two colors working here and it looks really good, but I still want a little bit more depth. So I think I'm gonna add um, another color and this is um, lemonade. And basically it's just a little bit lighter than that green I used. Squirt it out there. And I'm gonna kind of throw that in the little areas that look like they maybe need a little bit more color, a little bit more paint. And then I'm going to spread those in. And really, like I said, you don't have to wait too long for them to dry. They're drying pretty good. And you're just going to kind of wipe that over. And, you know, if you want to kind of keep this color a little bit more separate from your colors, other colors that you've used, that's fine. But it works really well it to add like I said a little more depth a little more interest get that extra off of there I can get really kind of particular with my excess paint that I have on my fingers so we're just gonna wipe that off and then you know if you feel like you've got enough you know if you've got maybe too much paint going on you've got all this stuff on your fingers you can always go to another page and just um, wipe it on there.